making a uh, quick video of my test solar grid uh, using just my basic spare parts to get everything tested and worked out. I've got three 100 watt uh, Renergy solar panels here. I could probably tip this trailer or the solar panels a little bit more to the south because there's slight inclination to the north here but the sun is pretty much overhead. Uh, getting some good sun on there. Uh, cables connected in parallel. Running down in. This isn't grounded. I need to ground this trailer. I need to set up some type of lightning rods overhead and ground it with lightning uh, uh, lightning cable and uh, come inside here solar cap panel cables come in uh, they come in here and this is a older PWAM solar charge controller um, this is just my test environment to make sure to get practice do it, know what I'm doing. This green light means that it's charging. I think that one means that the batteries are charged. Um, if there was a significant load, that would be orange or red if something was wrong. And that would be orange if, if something was wrong also. But that means the batteries are full. So, this is just an older solar charge controller and man I hate these little screw connectors they are a pain in the butt I don't know if anybody else has those problems but they ought to come up with something a lot better I got my uh, cable uh, from Renogy and that wasn't no easy thing to get in that uh, PMW charge controller also I don't even know how good those are in there Give it a slight wiggle, they're in there, but I don't like that at all. But uh, this here is some number six wire, and I couldn't get it to go in there also. So what I did was I uh, cut some 12-3 uh, wire and spliced it. That's 12 gauge. So it goes from uh, my batteries, that's from my batteries, my batteries down here. I got seven 175 amp 12 volt marine deep cycle batteries but just to test this uh, I just hooked three of them up made my own cables I need to learn how to solder better better and I also um, hope I wrote that down I do need to solder better get some uh, flux also I also need to get the right size uh, cable clamps also for the ends of them. The ones I got were too large. But anyhow, there's my three batteries. And as you can see from that post right there, if you cross polarities on, uh, you have two of them right and one of them wrong, and you go to connect a third up in parallel, exactly that much lead will melt off <laughs> in approximately two seconds. Right. Okay. But that's why this is a test environment. Luckily, it didn't fry the battery. Um, but I got my own cables on there. I need to be a little bit more consistent on what I use red for. Because this whole system mixes it in different places. And one part of my system, it's for minus. But uh, coming in from the solar panel, it's for pluses. There's my hydrometer. Got to learn more about how to use that. But my six gauge wire I have coming off the ends of my parallel and it comes up here and it's spliced in with these little bits of 12 gauge and it goes in my controller so I'm sure that's not very efficient but man those little doohickeys in there that you put the wires in they suck there ain't no other way about that so from 6 to 12 in the controller the cable, solar cables coming in doesn't overcharge the batteries um, charges the batteries 
And then I got a 1000 power bright 1100 watt power inverter and it gets pretty it gets warm it doesn't it doesn't quite reach hot and today's about 91 degrees in northeastern Nevada hasn't quite reached hot but it is warm and the fan kicks on um, so then I got my inverter uh, coming on the other side drawing on the other side of my three bank parallel see I got my uh, batteries go into my controller from that minus and that plus but then my inverter needs to get its minus and plus from somewhere well it gets it from the opposite direction minus and plus at the other end of the parallel and those three uh, deep cycle marine batteries are in parallel so I'm hoping I got that connected right. I want to get this researched more before I go full board. Um, so then the inverter, and I got these little strip lights here, like you see LED lights like you see in the theaters. And really they use so few watts that on my inverter, it doesn't even register when I have it on there. It's, it uses, doesn't even pull registered watts now this uh, that's that black cord right there now this red cord extension cord goes to my HughesNet modem and when I had my HughesNet modem and I plugged in my laptop it got up to 90 96 watts then leveled at 66 watts and I think that's because my laptop was charging up its own battery it went from like 90% charging to 95% charging, so it did charge its own battery off of this inverter. And it settled down to about 56 watts. And what we see here is about 12 watts. Is it's either 12 watts or 1,536 watts. <laughs> Quite a range there. All right. But I think it is uh, just about 12 watts. I'm fixing to put this uh, kilowatt on there because I'm fixing to leave this little test environment up for three or four days. Uh, powering these LED lights and this HughesNet modem. That's all. A um, couple other points that I wanted to make here. And that is I got to figure out a way to stabilize my inverter I do have a uh, nature 3000 watt inverter coming $800 supposed to be a inverter charger and I do have more batteries down there seven in total um, but whenever I had these LED lights and then I plugged in the modem it took down the LED lights BAM as soon as it level, as soon as the modem got done charging up, the LED lights came back on. But then I plugged in my laptop, and these lights went down, and the whole modem went down until the laptop had enough to get itself booted. Then the modem came back up, and the LED lights comes back up. So obviously, that can't go on in a real system. Now I have two UPS back to back that I will be plugging into my inverter and everything I plug in will be on the other side of those UPS's so hopefully they'll get their startup charge from those UPS's and won't draw that initial charge off of my inverter and my battery bank I have read that somewhere on some uh, website and I have some notes so I need to investigate that also to uh, negate that startup power charge Anyhow, this is my test environment, and my review, so I can look and see what I've done here. I need to watch out for battery gases, I'm going to leave this open, and I'm not supposed to have my inverter or my controller next to my batteries, because the battery gases are flammable, so I need to account for some way to vent these batteries. And uh, lots to learn, lots to do, and uh, 
I think the only smart thing I've done so far is I've used uh, secondary equipment in this test environment. Um, this uh, 1100 watt inverter instead of my good inverter and this uh, PWM solar charge controller instead of trying to hook up my good MMM PT solar charge controller and I do have a trimetric battery monitor and then a meter that comes off my MMPT so I'm not sure if I have overkill there and whether I want the uh, redundant measures or whether they themselves will draw off too much power so I got a lot more research to do and I gotta figure out how to run these stupid multimeters um, I don't know I'm not a rocket science but it seems like you gotta uh, I'm missing something look on the videos and they can get readings of amps and uh, volts but uh, I can't get nothing to make sense and I got two of them so I gotta figure that out fixing the head to the casa and do that alright that is my test power environment there's the inverter fan kicking off